As an avid movie fan, we have seen our fair share of sneakers in movies. This video will recap the top 10 iconic sneaker moments in cinema. This video will be sponsored by Rejuvenator Sneaker Cleaner, and if you haven't used their products yet, I highly recommend it. My very favorite is the laundry system, and if you guys actually want to save 10% off of your entire order, use code HESKICKS10. But thank you to you guys for the suggestions for top five videos. It is much appreciated. And this one comes from King Ryan James, who wanted me to do a top five shoes in movies. And I decided to expand on that and do a top 10. There are likely a ton of sneaker moments that we did not cover in this video. So leave a comment of a memorable sneaker moment in cinema that you remember. Let's go ahead and jump in. Number 10 spot goes to the movie Jumanji and the Parish Sneaker. The movie released on December 15th, 1995 and featured Robin Williams, Bonnie Hunt, and Kristen Dunst actually starred in that movie as well. It was an adaptation of an award-winning children's book and there's a scene in the Parish Shoe Factory where the kid takes the shoe and accidentally puts it on a conveyor belt and it gets shredded and that shoe actually says Parish, which is the last name of the people in the movie, but it's really a direct ripoff of the Nike Air Max 2 CB Charles Barkley's. Also, that sneaker model actually released in 1994, so it was fitting that it was in a movie that released in 1995. However, the timing of the factory scene was actually 1969. Fun fact, the Paris Shoestein actually is still on display in Keene, New Hampshire, and also there is a new adaptation of Jumanji featuring The Rock, Kevin Hart, Jack Black, and Karen Gillan, who actually played Nebula from Guardians of the Galaxy, if you guys didn't recognize her. The number nine spot goes to iRobot, which released on July 16th, 2004, featuring Will Smith. iRobot definitely ruffled some feathers for those viewers that really didn't like to see the product placement in the movies. They had so much product placement in this film, it was actually a bit distracting and could have taken away from the narrative. But as a sneaker person, the placement of the Converse Chuck Taylor All-Stars was an interesting one to me. In the future, would they actually remain as timeless as they are now? I would think so since they've been around for decades and are still a staple amongst consumers today. And in the scene, you can see Will Smith just picking up the shoe and looking at it and then putting it on his feet. The number eight spot goes to the Goonies and the Nike Skyforce High. The Goonies released June 7th, 1985 and was a fan favorite video for the youth of the 80s. In the scene, one of the kids named Data, AKA the token Asian, unfortunately, has a customized pair of Nike Sky Forces, and he has a heel trick that has a little spring thing that comes out and basically provides an oil slick that helps him escape. It was kind of like a James Bond moment for some Nikes in the 80s. Fun fact, Josh Brolin actually played Brand in the movie Goonies, who is now in the Avengers as Thanos, and he's also playing Cable in Deadpool 2. Also, the movie was filmed in Astoria, Oregon. The number seven spot goes to the movie Terminator and the Nike Vandal Highs. Terminator released in 1984 with Arnold Schwarzenegger. It features a sneaker that doesn't get a lot of love in the sneaker world, but there's definitely a cult following from movie lovers of the prop worn in the movie. In the scene, Kyle Reese is sneaking around trying to find some clothes, throws on a pair of Nike Vandals, and then escapes the police. And another fun fact, the Terminator Genesis movie in 2015 actually helped spawn the retro of the Nike Vandal in that same year since they needed it for some spare pairs in the movie. They actually reached out to Nike to recreate the shoe. Also noteworthy, Nike actually had a sneaker called the Nike Terminator that was released in 1985 with no relation to the movie. Number six spot goes to He Got Game and the Air Jordan 13. The movie was released in 1998 by Spike Lee and featured Denzel Washington, Ray Allen, and Mila Jovovich if that's how you say her name. So they had a ton of different sneaker cameos in the movie, but the one that sticks out the most is the one that is actually dubbed the He Got Games in the Sneakerverse, and that is the Air Jordan 13. The Air Jordan 13 was actually the relevant sneaker during the movie release. And in the movie, you can see Denzel Washington trying on the shoes, and then the employee actually sees his ankle bracelet. Also, you can see Denzel Washington playing Ray Allen one-on-one. -on -one. Some bonus shoes in the movie that we saw were the Nike Foam Posits, the Uptempo 97s, the Air Hawks, Total Max Uptempo, Chuck Taylors, Air More Uptempos, the Team Jordan 1s, as well as the Quantum Force 2, Sonic Flights, Air Moving Uptempos. Complex actually put together a really nice list of these sneakers. Also noteworthy, the other year Nike actually released a Pearl Foam Posit pack that featured the Air Hawks as well as the Pearl Foams. Although many sneaker people really weren't excited to see the Hawks included in the pack and didn't want to pay the premium price for both. The number five spot goes to Forrest Gump and the Nike Cortez. The movie released July 6, 1994 with Tom Hanks, who won the Oscar for Best Actor two years in a row after Philadelphia the previous year. The film features a moment where Forrest Gump was gifted a pair of the Cortezes, and you could see that he puts them on feet, and then he goes for a little bit of a run, like a really far run. 
like a ridiculously long run. Which is why you hear the term run for us, run. About the Nike Cortezes though, they actually originally released in 1972 and they were Nike's first track shoe. These sneakers have a rocky past though. It was actually a replica of the Onusuka Tiger Corsair, which Nike founder Bill Barrowman sort of stole the design and made it his own version. And a bonus for you, you can actually buy the same exact colorway actually right now, which is available on Nike.com for only 80 bucks. The number four spot goes to White Man Can't Jump, featuring the Nike Air Command Force. The movie released in 1992 with Wesley Snipes, Woody Harrelson, and Rosie Perez. The Nike Air Command Force originally released in 1991, and there is a colorway known as the Billy Hoyle, as a nod to the movie and the character that played Billy Hoyle. In the scene, you could say that they're hustling on the courts, playing basketball. And just like most basketball-inspired movies, there are a ton of other sneakers that were featured in the movie, but the Nike Air Command Force is the one that I remember the best, and it's definitely one of my favorites. Unfortunately, Nike actually retroed these in 2014 for $200, and fans like myself like the idea of the retro. However, the materials were really cheap, and the product released in just too many oddball colorways. Another fun fact, Russell Westbrook and Nick Collison actually dressed up as the two from White Men Can't Jump for Halloween. Pretty hilarious. The number three spot goes to Do the Right Thing with the Air Jordan 4 in the white cement colorway. The movie released in 1989 by Spike Lee, and it features one of the most iconic and relatable moments in sneaker history on the big screen, and that is when the character Buggin' Out confronts a Celtics fan who scuffs his brand new Air Jordan 4 cement colorway. I mean, the dude scuffed him pretty good. And a little bonus, Jordan Brand actually seated select people a special package with the scuffed shoe along with the colored lace detail in a shoe pack that also featured a new model, the Jordan Fly 89 trainer. But the details of the Air Jordan 4 in the cement colorway with the scuff was super rad. And just so you guys know, when you guys see the letters DTRT when it comes to Jordans, that stands for do the right thing. The number two spot on my countdown goes to the Space Jam movie featuring the Air Jordan 11 Space Jam. The movie released in 1996 and it featured Michael Jordan himself. It also had Bill Murray, Bugs Bunny, and many other NBA stars from that era including Larry Johnson, Patrick Ewing, Charles Barkley, Muggsy Bogues, and Larry Bird. The Air Jordan 11 Space Jam was actually worn first in the 1995 NBA playoffs, but then MJ wore them in the movie and they actually never got a release until 2000 for $125. They did retro in 2009 for $175 and once again 2016 for $220. They did have a bunch of other sneaker moments worth mentioning in that movie including an Air Jordan 9 OG, an Air Jordan 10 Shadow, the Air Structure Triax, and the Air Jordan 2. And an Air Jordan 9 cleat that is actually true to life because Jordan actually left the NBA to go play in the MLB, which is part of what the movie's about. There are rumors of a Space Jam 2 featuring LeBron James, but we're not really sure if that's actually happening yet. All right, we made it to the number one spot on the countdown. If you guys learned something new or you guys are enjoying the content, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Notification bell if you want to be notified of when my videos go live. The number one spot goes to Back to the Future 2 and the Nike Mag. And I know this is a little bit controversial because some people would have put Space Jam at the number one spot. But for me personally, Back to the Future 2 and the Nike Mag Future thought of that movie was just too epic of a sneaker moment, and I really, really love what they did with that. Ironically, Tinker Hatfield ended up designing both of the shoes, so at least the credit is there for the creator. Back to the Future 2 released November 22nd in 1989. The Nike Mag was featured as a self-lacing sneaker that was also used to ride the hoverboards in the movie. The shoes were actually designed and originally intended to be worn by slam ball players in the movie, but the scene was too expensive and never filmed, so the shoes instead were made part of Marty McFly's wardrobe. Bob Gale explained in the Back to the Future 2 commentary that the special effects required to bring the technology to life were actually really simple. They basically had extra hands there that actually pulled the laces tight, and a light would switch on that illuminated the Nike logo. Obviously, the sound effects were added later on to complete the effect. So in 2008, the Nike Hyperdunk McFly was a themed shoe that was after the movie, in 2011, Nike actually created 1,500 pairs of the actual Nike mag that sold via auction with proceeds going to Michael J. Fox's Foundation for Parkinson's Research. In 2014, we got some officially licensed pairs from Universal that lit up and only cost $100, but they didn't have Nike's name associated to it, and it was really just for those that wanted to complete their Halloween costumes. And finally, October 21st, 2015, the actual future date that was in the DeLorean time traveling car in the movie, Tinker Hatfield hand delivered the very first pair of self-lacing Nike mags to Michael J. Fox himself, the original Marty McFly. How epic is that? 
Anyways, that is a top 10 video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the content. And if this list was too simple for you and you want one that is more of a challenge, leave a comment that says top five sneakers in movies I won't remember or something like that. But that is all we have. If you guys want to see other top five videos on my channel, go ahead and check the link in the description. And at this time, if you want to click any of the videos that you see on screen, feel free to do so. Thank you again for watching. Catch you guys for some more videos soon. Peace.